Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. I'm really happy because I finally finished a huge project that has been taking up most of my time night and day for the past couple of weeks. I'm talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies in real life. Now, if you're watching this video as soon as it's posted, it most likely will not be up yet, but you're gonna find a link to it in the description and then I'll post a full video tomorrow. But anyways, the video has a lot of visual effects, including a lot of muzzle flashes. So I thought I'd show you a couple of things that I did in uh, creating these muzzle flashes. And I know that there's a lot of tutorials out there, but I still thought it was worthwhile showing you uh, some of the things that I do to tweak and enhance this type of effect. Because oftentimes just dragging and dropping some assets from such as Action Essentials, it's not enough. If you wanna create a convincing muzzle flash effect, there are a ton of different elements that can come into play to uh, make it as realistic as possible. So let's jump into After Effects and uh, let's get started. So before we begin anything, we need to take a look at some footage of a real weapon being fired. And in my case, in this video, it's an AR-15. And it's really important to take a look at some footage as reference to get an idea of you know the size of the muzzle flash the look of it and just pretty much all the different elements that come into play when a gun is fired. Now in my case particularly the gun is even suppressed so that means that it's going to have a completely different feel and look to it. Now when I was looking up all this footage I noticed that there isn't much of a flash at all when it comes to uh, most suppressed weapons. It's mostly just all smoke. This is realistic but oftentimes when you're doing visual effects you need to think of what looks good also, and you need to sort of find that balance. I know it's weird to say that you shouldn't do things the completely realistic route. Uh, sometimes you kind of need to beef up some of the effects in, in order to, uh, to make it more believable for the audience and not just believable overall. If you're watching a gun that's just puffing out smoke, some people might not really you know, understand that it's suppressed and all that. They might just see it as, oh, that effect is done wrong. So just finding a compromise, you know, not creating a huge blast of muzzle flash. Obviously keep in mind that it's suppressed, but still find that, that uh, sort of balance between what's realistic and what the audience think is uh, realistic. So anyways, enough rambling on about this. Let's get straight into it. Now we're gonna start this tutorial with something very boring. Um, we have to just track the tip of our gun uh, with our null object created here. And um, I had to do this frame by frame just because my footage was a little too uh, blurry because of all the motion blur. So I had to just animate, as you can see here, the position, the scale, and the rotation of this null. Now I only had to animate the position frame by frame, and then I pretty much adjusted the rotation so that the, the, the top of the null would always align with the, um, I guess, the direction of, of the gun. And then I just scaled the null up over time since our gun uh, is getting closer to the camera. So next up, I'm adding this uh, muzzle flash asset from Action Essentials. It's a suppressed muzzle flash, so that works well with what we're doing. So once we've aligned our asset here, I'm gonna add a few effects that are gonna just make it blend with our scene a little bit better. The first one is a glow effect. Now just tweak some of your settings until it looks right and then just uh, set the asset to add and that will help it blend with the footage a little bit more. Then we're gonna add a fast blur since uh, nothing is ever perfectly in focus, uh, especially this shot when you know there's a lot of movement and everything. And speaking of blurriness because of motion, we just need to add some motion blur to this clip. Now the button for motion blur for that particular layer may be hidden, so just click on this toggle switches slash modes button down below here and it will reveal some new set of options. And once you click that uh, ball in motion icon, then click the same type of icon on the top here and that will make visible any layer that has uh, motion blur activated. So next up, uh, we're gonna create some smoke. So to do that, let's create a new composition and create a new solid. And we're gonna drop an effect called fractal noise. And I really gotta thank independent VFX for, for this part of, of this tutorial because I learned this technique from that channel and I really recommend you check out the rest of their tutorials because they have some really, really good stuff. Uh, but anyways, I'm just adjusting some of the parameters here and animating the evolution of our um, fractal noise. And then I'm also animating the offset of the turbulence so that we can uh, make it seem like this pattern is moving up, which essentially that's what smoke would do if, uh, if it were in our scene. Then we're gonna add some turbulent displace effect 
And um, all we're going to do here is just, um, you know, maybe play with the scale, but then just animate the evolution just like we did with uh, the fractal noise. And uh, that should be it. Once you're done with that, we have a smoke composition that we can use in our main comp. And uh, we can now use this for all sorts of things like creating some smoke coming out of uh, where the shells come out of the gun and uh, even some extra smoke from the tip of your gun if you, if you need it. Then set it to screen and you know, maybe drop down the opacity a bit. Create a mask and feather it out. And then, and then what we want to do is create an animation for the smoke so that it comes out of uh, where the shells are being ejected. Uh, move the anchor point and then animate the position to start from where the shells are being ejected and then move it sort of away from the gun and up. And then scale it up, uh, not just because the gun is getting closer to the camera, but also because the smoke is sort of expanding, or at least we're just giving it that illusion. And then, you know, the last thing that you want to animate is the transparency. And then what you want to do is duplicate this layer uh, every time there is a new flash or a new shell being ejected, which are pretty much happening at the same time. And then all you need to do, obviously, is just readjust the position uh, and, and scale and then do that for every time that the gun fires. And that already adds a lot to, to this effect. So another element that we can add to uh, further complete this effect, other than the shells coming out, is the illumination of the room and even of our subject firing the weapon. Although this isn't a really big muzzle flash, there still would be some type of you know, light being emitted from it and, and hitting the face of our guy firing the gun. So what we're gonna do is duplicate the footage we can uh, trim it to be a little bit smaller, but it doesn't really matter because we're just gonna be animating the opacity in the end. Then we can add a curves effect and uh, you know just sort of make it really bright and try to match the warm orangish color of the muzzle flash. Uh, then all you need to do is just create some masks. And at this point, you're, you're sort of painting. You're, you're painting where the light would hit. So like some of the parts of, the, of our subject that are facing the muzzle flash and that are closest to it. And then once you create all these shapes, you can uh, feather them out. Now you can go as detailed as you want, but the only downside to that is that you have to animate all of these masks uh, to you know, follow your subject since he is moving and uh, you know, it, these masks are gonna need to change some shape. They need to stick to those portions that you're drawing them onto. So once you do that, uh, you can set it to add and then maybe drop down the opacity a bit and then you have to animate the opacity so that the layer flashes every time there is a muzzle flash. So just uh, bring the opacity up whenever there's a flash and then just uh, fade it out after a couple of frames as soon as the flash is uh, gone. And we can add another mask to this uh, column that our gun is passing by just to make the effect interact a little bit more with its environment. And then finally we can add a solid, make it the color of your muzzle flash or close to it, then set it to add or screen, whichever works best for you. And then just make a generic circular mask over uh, just the area of where the guy is shooting. Then feather it out and then once again you have to animate the opacity whenever the, the gun flashes. And that with our other mask creates a pretty convincing illumination caused by the flash. All right, so the very final thing to add are the shells being ejected, and this is very simple, and it's also very similar to what we did with the smoke. All you need to do is bring in your asset and scale it down to match the size of uh, what it would look like, and then animate the position starting from where the shells are being ejected, and then sort of shooting off screen. Now what I did in this particular shot in the final video is something actually completely different. I actually used trap code particular, and I used the shell asset as a sprite for trap code to um, use as a particle. It's sort of a whole other tutorial in itself, but fortunately there is a YouTube channel called Render Reaper uh, that has already done a uh, tutorial on this and I think it's, it's super helpful. I'll post it in the description along with the independent VFX channel. All right guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like it, please hit that like button. And also one last thing before you guys go, uh, if you share this video, with your friends on Facebook, on Twitter, by using these hashtags, any of these hashtags, um, I'll send you the remix to the original Black Ops Zombies theme song that you can use in your videos. Also, one last thing, I wanna give a huge thanks to Arcadia. They have a YouTube channel, go ahead and check it out because they helped me a ton with this video. But anyways, this is the first of many projects that are coming to this channel. 
uh, followed by a lot of tutorials, a lot of behind the scenes look. I can't wait to share everything with you guys. Um, so until then, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Car Productions and I'll see you next time.